I got one. You ready? I'm ready. Go for All it. right, let's do it. Aha! Just as we suspected. This watermelon doesn't have any seeds. Its DNA is unnatural. Farmers have been using Mendel's principles for hundreds of years to manipulate plant species. But now, genetic engineering is at the forefront of breeding technology. There's a new kind of rice that's really rich in vitamin A and all kinds of other manipulations that are going to be great and helpful worldwide. Now, let's take a look at some more examples of genetic variation and selective breeding. Sort of see examples of natural selection and selective breeding. Selective breeding. Natural selection. Selective breeding. Natural selection. Selective breeding. Natural selection. Definitely natural selection. Selective breeding. Natural selection. So of course we can't see their DNA, but we know that genetic variations occur randomly in nature and may get passed on to the offspring. On the flip side, humans have been selectively breeding for thousands of years, changing the process and the probability of genetic variation. So, how are traits passed on in nature? And how much control do we actually have over genetic variation? This is a question best answered in the spirit of Darwin. All right, so although Darwin's famous Galapagos finches were important in developing his theory of evolution with natural selection, it was his fascination with these birds that he used to support his theory. As an avid pigeon breeder, Darwin used the birds to demonstrate how selective breeding can actually accelerate and even steer the process of natural selection. It's hard to believe that some of these species we're going to be discovering today are actually descendants of the rock pigeon. It's all thanks to pigeon breeders like Darwin and like Earl here. Okay, Earl. After you. Thank you. Could you tell me um, some of the history of selective breeding? Well, I guess it goes back to probably almost before recorded time, I guess. Um, you know, they're all derived from a European uh, rock pigeon, and of course, through selective breeding, uh, people uh, develop different colors. You take two birds, and in your mind, you kind of visualize what kind of babies will they make? And it's not just the two birds that you're looking at. You know, it's, it's their parents and grandparents. It's all those factors go together. So in selective breeding, humans have artificially replaced some of the natural selective pressures that can alter the phenotype of a bird, like these ones here. So the pigeons that you're raising here, what are the specific traits that you are trying to select for? You see, she's got black in the chest, she's got mm -hmm. black in the tail. Uh -huh. We don't, they don't want that, okay. not as a saddle. If I can get the type that she has and get her cleaned up as far as color goes, then we've, we've accomplished it. So if selective breeders here like Earl can get these results in only a handful of generations, imagine what breeders can do over thousands of years of breeding pigeons. We didn't stop our investigation with Earl. We decided to go visit his neighbor Robert to see how he uses selective breeding to create his own varieties. Oh, there's a lot of birds in here. So give me an overview of, of what we got in all these cages. Okay, those are frillbacks. It's a German, German breed originally. When you look at a frillback, this is what you're looking for. Long curl and lots of it. Through natural selection and the influences of nature, it's likely that none of these rare breeds would have ever evolved. But here, anything is possible. Okay, if selective breeders can get these kind of results from the natural reproduction of birds, what's on the horizon for genetic engineering? All right, so pigeon breeders are breeding things that don't normally occur in nature. Let's see what you can do with genetics. To get answers, we made a visit to Dr. Brian Kirkpatrick 
at the University of Wisconsin. What we're doing is we're using uh, DNA testing uh, to make selection of animals more effective. So we're, we're trying to accelerate that process. We do work with a couple of different traits, one in the reproductive area, one in the health area. So we're mapping genes for twin birth in cattle, and we're also mapping genes for susceptibility to a disease called Yoni's disease. And what's happened just in the last couple of years now is that we now have tools where you can genotype a massive number of genetic markers throughout the entire genome and you can make predictions of which are the better of those young bulls. The estimate based on the DNA is probably more than twice as accurate as the estimate without the DNA. Genetic engineering typically uh, is used in the context of making different gene constructs that perhaps have not ever been seen before and putting those into a plant. And in terms of that kind of genetic engineering, there isn't a lot that's going on right now uh, in the U.S. and I think there is a lot of potential to use that kind of genetic engineering to make animals more healthy, make them more disease resistant. And my guess is that'll be the first place that you actually see that kind of genetic engineering employed. We learned that Dr. Kirkpatrick uses genetics to help make animals like these cows healthier. Certain abnormalities, for instance, aren't always visible, so they pull samples of DNA from the cows. This DNA tells us if the cows have a genetic problem. If they do, they don't mate them. In many ways, it's using selective breeding, like Earl and Robert do with pigeons, but taking it to a whole new level using genetics. So we've seen how Darwin's fascination with selective breedings in pigeons influenced his theories of evolution. Plus, we got a rare look at the world of selective breeding, where one core species can be used to create hundreds of genetically improbable variations. Can you think of any other examples of selective breeding in animals that you know, influences our lives? Look, with a little bit of research, you too could discover something new in genetics that changes the world, which is another good reason to never stop exploring your world. Final for me, Python.